Venus is often called Earth's sister planet. For one thing, these two are almost the same size. Plus, Venus and Earth are very similar in mass and composition. Venus orbits the Sun within its Goldilocks, a.k.a. habitable, zone, too, just like Earth. But the differences between our home planet and Venus are more substantial than any similarities. For example, the atmosphere of Venus is 90 times as thick as what we have here on Earth. The surface temperature is so high you could melt lead there. And the air is toxic. It consists of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid. In other words, if humans decided to move to Venus, some serious terraforming, which is basically ecological engineering, would be needed first. And still, some scientists believe that Venus is an even better candidate for terraforming than Mars. And there are several suggestions on how to do it. One of the ideas involves the use of genetically engineered algae to fix carbon into organic compounds. Unfortunately, the more researchers study this method, the less plausible it becomes. The main problem is that the production of organic molecules from carbon dioxide needs hydrogen. But this element is extremely rare on Venus. This planet doesn't have a protective magnetosphere and its upper atmosphere is exposed to direct erosion by the solar wind. That's why it has lost most of its original hydrogen to space. Also, any carbon that was bound up in organic molecules would be converted back into carbon dioxide in no time due to the ultra-hot surface environment. And Venus wouldn't even begin to cool down until after the removal of the largest part of carbon dioxide. The next idea was to bombard Venus's atmosphere with hydrogen. As a result, water and graphite would be produced. This water would fall down to the planet and cover almost 80% of its surface, forming vast oceans. To do it, we would need loads of hydrogen, so it would have to be harvested directly from one of our solar system's ice giants or their moons. This suggestion also involves iron aerosol, getting added to the atmosphere of Venus. It could be derived from a number of sources, like the moon, asteroids, or mercury. The resulting atmosphere would be around three bars, which is basically three times more surface pressure than on Earth. It would also mainly consist of nitrogen. With time, some of it would dissolve into new oceans, reducing atmospheric pressure even more. There's also an idea of solar shades. A series of small spacecraft or a single large lens might be used to divert sunlight from the planet's surface. This could probably reduce the insane temperatures on the planet. Venus absorbs twice as much sunlight as our planet. It's believed to have played a big role in the runaway greenhouse effect, which has made the planet what it is today. Such a shade could be based in space, this way, it would also serve to block the solar wind, thus reducing the amount of radiation the surface of Venus is exposed to. This radiation is a huge issue when it comes to the habitability of the planet. If this method indeed managed to cool Venus down, it would lead to atmospheric CO2, becoming liquid or frozen and getting deposited on the surface as dry ice. Solar reflectors could also be positioned in the atmosphere or on the surface of the planet. In this case, they could be large reflective balloons, sheets of carbon nanotubes or graphene or something totally different. One of the coolest suggestions is to build cities above Venus's clouds. This way they could act as both solar shields and as processing stations. The first colonists would live there, acting as terraformers gradually converting the atmosphere of the planet into something livable. Later, they would migrate to the surface. In our solar system, most planets spin counterclockwise, but not Venus. This rebel planet decided to spin clockwise, and scientists are still trying to figure out why. By the way, why do planets rotate in general? What defines the speed of their rotation? Does the sun rotate? Buckle up and let's try to answer these questions. Venus is the second planet from the Sun and the hottest planet in our solar system. Did you know that Venus is sometimes called Earth's twin? 
That's because it's similar in size and composition to our own planet. But that's where the similarities end, because Venus is a pretty crazy place, to say the least. For example, the weather. On Venus, it's always hot and cloudy. And when I say hot, I mean it like it's over 800 degrees Fahrenheit there. And those clouds? They're not made of water like the ones on Earth. Instead, they're made of sulfuric acid. So yeah, you wouldn't want to go outside without a really good sunscreen on Venus. If you look at the photos taken from its surface, you can see these toxic yellow clouds and cracked, desolate landscapes. And the spacecraft that captured this turned off almost immediately after sending these photos. Poor fella. But the surface of Venus isn't just some solid, dark, flat land. In fact, Venus has mountains that are taller than Mount Everest. These mountains aren't made of rock like the ones on Earth, though. Instead, they're made of a kind of volcanic material that's denser than... Venus is a pretty creepy place that holds many mysteries. One of them has been puzzling scientists for years, and this is the planet's rotation. Most planets in our solar system rotate counterclockwise, but Venus isn't like the other girls. It rotates clockwise, and that's not all. It also rotates around the sun faster than it rotates around itself. In other words, a year on this planet passes faster than a day. It's almost like Venus made being quirky its life mission. But why is that? Well, scientists have a few theories. The most popular theory says that Venus was actually spinning counterclockwise like the other planets, but then something happened to flip it around. And what could that something be, you ask? A planet-sized object. Yep, astronomers believe that something huge once collided with Venus, causing it to spin in the opposite direction. You can imagine this like a cosmic billiard shot, with this mysterious huge object being the cue ball and Venus being the target ball. But we can't actually say that Venus is spinning the wrong way. There's no such thing as a wrong direction of spin in the universe. This is actually called the retrograde rotation. This is when a planet rotates in the opposite direction to its orbit around the Sun. Venus, for example, has a retrograde rotation, which means that the Sun rises in the west and sets in the east on that planet. So now, when the horoscope says something like Mercury in retrograde, you'll know what it means. Oh, but Venus isn't the only weird one in our solar system. There are definitely some wacky ways that planets can rotate. For example, most planets in our solar system spin around an imaginary line called an axis. This axis is usually straight up and down in relation to the planet's orbit around the Sun. However, some planets like Uranus have a tilted axis, which means it's almost on its side in relation to its orbit. This tilt causes the planet's poles to be nearly in the same place as its orbit. The result? As the planet orbits the Sun, different parts of it receive different amounts of sunlight, causing extreme seasonal variations. For example, one pole might experience continuous sunlight, while the other is in complete darkness for a long time. Uranus is the only planet in our solar system that rotates on its side. Scientists think that it could repeat Venus's history. Once upon a time, a large impact knocked Uranus off its original axis of rotation, causing it to tilt at an angle of 98 degrees. We should be grateful for Jupiter. Its crazy gravity pulls all the asteroids and protects us from such collisions. All this is somewhat similar to tidally locked planets. Imagine going on a date with a planet, but instead of being charming and mysterious like you'd hoped, it's just staring at you with the same face all night long. That's basically what it's like to hang out with a tidally locked planet. Tidally locked planets are planets that rotate around their axis at the same rate that they orbit their star. This means that the same side of the planet always faces the star, while the other side is in permanent darkness. Being tidally locked can have some weird effects on the planet's climate and weather. The side facing the star can become extremely hot, while the other side can be incredibly cold. The atmosphere on the planet can also get pretty wild, with strong winds blowing from the hot side to the cold side. 
And it doesn't have to be planets only. Our moon also works this way. Did you know that we always see only one side of the moon? That's because it's tidally locked to the Earth. We can also take the dwarf planet Pluto as an example. It has a strange rotational relationship with its largest moon, Charon. They're tidally locked, which means that they always face each other with the same side. As a result, Pluto and Charon appear to waltz around a common center of gravity, creating a unique dance in space. But the oddities of our solar system don't end there. There are also planets with super fast rotations. While most planets rotate at a fairly sedate pace, some of them are sonic levels fast. Jupiter, for example, rotates once every 9 hours and 56 minutes, which means that it has a day that's less than 10 hours long. That's fast enough to cause the planet to bulge out at its equator. And also, this rapid rotation creates strong bands of winds that can reach speeds of up to 400 miles per hour. And if all this still seems logical and kinda makes sense, then how about chaotic rotations? Yep, some planets have a rotation that's so irregular and unpredictable that it's known as chaotic rotation. This is often caused by the gravitational influence of nearby moons or other planets. And it's mostly the case with moons and small objects like that. In our solar system, some moons of Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune have chaotic rotation. By the way, the Sun rotates too, just like the planets. However, its rotation is not uniform. The equator rotates faster than the poles. Pretty weird, isn't it? This phenomenon creates a magnetic field that's responsible for phenomena like sunspots and solar flares. But all this raises an interesting topic. Why do planets rotate in the first place? This may sound like a silly question, but can you answer it? The answer might be trickier than you imagine. It all started around 4.5 billion years ago with the formation of our solar system. When it formed, it started as a large cloud of gas and dust. As the cloud began to contract due to its own gravity, it began to spin faster and faster like a spinning top. This spinning motion caused the cloud to flatten into a disk-like shape. As the cloud continued to contract, the center became denser and hotter, eventually forming the sun. Meanwhile, the material in the disk began to clump together and form planets. But because the disk was already spinning, this spinning motion was inherited by the planets as they formed. In other words, the planets rotate by inertia. They inherited the spinning motion of the cloud of gas and dust from which they formed. This is known as the conservation of angular momentum. This is the same principle that causes ice skaters to spin faster when they bring their arms in. And that's a wrap on the wacky world of planet rotations. From the lightning fast spin of Jupiter to the bizarre backwards rotation of Venus, it's clear that our solar system is full of surprises. But thanks to the laws of physics and the gravitational pull of the sun, these planets continue to spin on, keeping time with the steady beat of the cosmos. Stay tuned. Ah, Earth. The third rock from the sun. The blue planet. You get it. Its atmosphere is made up of around 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. A nice balance for any living creatures to breathe. The weather here is also perfect for life to exist, unlike places like Saturn, Mercury, or any other celestial object in our solar system. We have the troposphere to thank for that. It's the densest part of the atmosphere on our planet and is 5 to 9 miles wide. It's the layer of the atmosphere that always affects our weather and secures the right conditions for life to exist and to have bodies of water. Earth is just sitting in its orbital path, minding its own business, revolving around the Sun, until BAM! Venus and Mars swoop in and spoil the fun. No one wants to leave poor Earth alone. These two relatively large celestial objects moving toward Earth will have dire consequences for our planet, starting with changes in its orbiting trajectory path. The planet's orbits in the solar system have to maintain the right balance so that nothing goes haywire. Of course, if any large object approaches Earth, 
it would throw our orbiting path off course. The planets will revolve around each other, which will cause plenty of natural disasters on our lanes. This will also affect our rotation timing, potentially slowing it down. Days will not flow, but drag by. Animals that rely on daytime will need to readjust their biological clocks. Nocturnal animals will also need to figure out how to cope with the long nights. Humans have adjusted pretty well to the 24 hours a day timing. Time itself is just a human construct to measure things. We'll have a tough time sleeping and adjusting to the stretched day. Marine animals rely on the natural current flow to migrate around the oceans. With Mars and Venus crashing the party, it looks like they will also need to find new paths. Birds migrating to other lands throughout the year will also be confused and not know what to do. In general, the Earth's temperature will rise, and massive heat waves and permanent climate changes will occur. This brings us to our next issue, the heat. The radical temperature rise will turn everything into a barren desert. It'll be summer all year long, especially if Venus is in the picture. Most of the planet will dry up and won't be suitable for growing crops. Venus is hot. I mean, really hot. Even though it's not the closest planet to the Sun, it's still the hottest. The temperatures on Venus are close to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which will melt you like an ice cube. The lands on Venus are generally flat, probably due to the temperatures. It's mainly hot because its atmosphere is thick and traps the hazardous gases inside. If Venus inches its way towards us, it'll invite those gases to our atmosphere and compromise it. Mars, or the red planet as we know it, is very cold. That might stay the same if it starts rotating around us. It's also home to the largest dormant volcano in our solar system, which makes Mount Everest look like a tiny bush compared to a tree. With so much instability, it might just wake up one day and spew out molten lava. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, which makes the planet chilly. Its gravity is quite similar to ours. It's actually very cold and has ice caps in the poles covered with carbon dioxide. The same is true for Mercury. You can only last there as long as you can hold your breath and be in the sweet spot between the sunrise and sunset. The three planets orbiting each other will eventually collide. It's just a matter of time. And the moon, just hanging out like a fly on the wall, will be so insignificant that something will eventually throw it off course and another planet will capture it to its orbit. Or, in the most dire case, it will collide with one of the two intruding planets. Earth will experience extreme tidal waves like nothing before. The two new planets revolving around Earth will cause a major imbalance, making our gravity shift out of control. Each tidal wave will be bigger than the previous one and will cover the dry land. Plenty of little scattered islands in the oceans will be completely submerged. Coastal cities and towns will also be home to fish. Flat countries in general will need boats to get around. Dams and dikes won't be enough to stop the water from coming in. Everyone needs to move towards higher ground to escape the floods. With the climate getting hotter, the polar caps will melt like ice cream on a sweltering summer day and add to the water level rising. Within a few months, the whole Arctic will be nothing but liquid. But wait, there's more! The crust will wear out due to the instability of the Earth's surface and fluctuating gravity. The Earth's crust is mainly made up of oxygen, which means we're basically walking on air. We might experience more earthquakes than before, and dormant volcanoes will wake up from their deep slumber. The skies will be covered in ash, making flights impossible. No one can travel by sea or by air. Importing and exporting will become history. The overall climate will get hotter, just like in Venus. The three planets orbiting each other and their huge mass might even unintentionally welcome other planets and celestial bodies to join the party. So, what if Jupiter decided to turn up? Now, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. To give you an idea, the Earth would be just the size of a grape if Jupiter were the size of a basketball. It also has the largest storm we can perceive. That's known as the Red Spot, a place twice the size of Earth that has hurricane-like storms that have been going on for hundreds of years. Now, by the time you're done watching this video, you can expect the storm to still be going at it. Since the planet is huge, gravity must be quite strong here. 
It also has many moons, some of them of our little Earth. There will be no room for any proper space among the planets. Jupiter's moons will be thrown off course and latch onto other planets around. Some of the moons might collide with each other, causing massive debris to be displaced all over the place. The gravity of the planetary party will attract comets to enter the atmosphere, potentially crashing down on us. Oxygen levels will deplete, so the Earth's crust crumbling will continue. It'll rip open the ozone layer, causing heavy strokes of ultraviolet waves to enter our atmosphere. We won't be able to step outside for too long without some protective gear and oxygen tanks. Human civilization will change drastically. We'll all live in sheltered containers that will provide clean air and safe and filtered sun rays. The shelters will be sturdy enough to withstand frequent earthquakes. We will grow only enough crops to sustain ourselves until we leave the Earth. Since it'll only be a matter of time before the planets collide, the next step would be to create large rocket ships to fly us out of the Earth. With Mars, Venus, and Jupiter revolving close to us, it won't be easy to do so. All the space debris will be blocking us from exiting the space zone area. The only safe place outside this region will be many millions of miles away, where only single planets exist. They may or may not have the conditions to host life, but humans will have the technology to land just about anywhere with similar gravity and construct the right shelters. Eventually, Mars, Venus, Earth, and Jupiter will collide with each other and break like eggs, like a big space omelet. Don't forget the moon's crashing and breaking in the mix, but we'll already be far, far away by then, hopefully.